That's right, it's yet another video. That's right, it's yet another video without me calling somebody to the carpet. You know, folks, the odd thing about the state of YouTube is I saw the drama perpetuating. That's right, I said perpetuating. For those of you that are tired of hearing that word, I saw the drama pushing forward and dragging things along with it. And I got concerned because I was watching the state of YouTube fall into the toilet. Well, guess what? The drama has gotten to the point now where it's eating itself. I may never have to come forward and make a statement because the drama is beating itself about the head and neck. All the drama causers are going at each other's throats and basically making YouTube an odd place to be. So, since my life has changed, again, since the last time I spoke to you folks, I figured I'd make another quick video. And since I'm making another video, I felt it was appropriate to change my environment. Thus, I'm in my car. Now, for all of you wonderful viewers out there that say the same thing every time I make one of these videos, let me see if I can quote you here. Oh my god, he's driving! He's so inconsiderate about other people! How irresponsible he's driving! He's gonna have an accident! Let me uh, put your minds at ease. If you pay close attention to the way that this video is happening, I occasionally look at the camera, like that. But then I go back to looking forward. The amount of time I spend looking at the camera is the same amount of time that I spend looking at the rear view mirror, looking at the side view mirrors. I look at the rear view mirror to see who's behind me. I look at the side view mirrors to see who's next to me so that I can drive safely. By your thought process, I shouldn't drive my car because my eyes come off the road to look up in my rear view mirror and to the side in my side view mirror as much as it does to look down at the camera. Since I'm irresponsible and it's dangerous to drive while filming, obviously it's dangerous to drive while not filming. Anyway, getting back on to what I was saying here, so my life has taken, taken, my life has taken another wacky twist. The last time I recorded, I went on and I made a 20 minute video, for those of you that didn't understand why it was 20 minutes long, if you read the description, you would see that it was unedited footage. I was showing you guys what an average recording session for me looks like, so you know at the end, when you get this one piece, all the other stuff that I cut out. I do it all in one take, as you can see by the last video, that's the reason why some of the points were repeated several times and said different ways because I was trying to communicate myself and then I decided, fuck it, I'm just gonna put the entire thing up. Now, the last thing that you all had heard from me is that I was getting screwed over by the union, that I had called the union representative and he said, um, uh, well, we need to hold on to this document because you're quitting the union and therefore you could become a non-union worker and I don't know, blah, 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 blah. So, I contacted someone else in the union, that nice lady that I told you about, that when I called originally she said, oh, you're allowed to go back to work? I called her again to make sure that they got my resignation letter. She verified that yes, they got the resignation letter and that I was completely done. I didn't have to do anything more. I verified this fact by asking her, who else do I need to call? What other documents do I need to fill out? Who do I need to kill to get the hell out of the union? She told me that I was ready to go and there was no other problems and I was, everything was fine. And then she asked me about the pension thing because I had called her the day before and left her a voice message asking what I could do to expedite the situation because I had that conversation with John Sautel. I told her what I told you folks, which was that John had said to me, oh, I don't know, you know, you, you left the union and, and you could still be working for a non-union, blah, 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 blah. Her response to the statement was, that's bullshit. They've got no right to hold your document now that you're no longer part of the union. So she gave me a couple phone numbers to call to start a, a, a process of making sure that this is getting done as quickly as possible. Now here's the wacky part. She gave me two phone numbers, one to one guy, one to the other guy. She told me to call the first guy because he's the one I definitely want to talk to. I called and got that guy's secretary. I talked to her for about five minutes because she asked for me to leave a message and I said, ma'am, I'm not sure if I can leave a message because this is a detailed circumstance I need to explain to this gentleman so that I can get this taken care of. She said, okay, go ahead. So I explained it to her and she said, you need to talk to this guy. It was guy number two that I was supposed to call on the list. I said, okay, I'm gonna call him right now because I have his number. So I hung up with her and I called the other guy. When the other guy picked up the phone, apparently he was just getting off the phone with the secretary, the first guy that I had called. She called him and informed him I was going to be calling. So I called this guy, gave him the lowdown on what had happened and the reason why I quit the union, the reason why I wasn't going back to the union, the fact that I didn't plan on ever working union work again, and all I wanted to do was get my pension paperwork filled out as quickly as possible, but Mr. Sautel was making it sound like it wasn't going to happen. So he said to me, all right, I'll look into this for you and I'll give you a call back. It's three o'clock in the afternoon, so I can't guarantee that I'll get in contact with anybody. I'll definitely be calling you tomorrow though. I said, okay, hung up the phone. 
15 minutes later, my phone rang. The area code was the area code of the phone number that I called to talk to that guy. So I thought, hey, he called me back pretty quick. Picked up the phone, the guy says to me, well, I talked to Mr. Sautel and he told me that the paperwork is signed and they're mailing it off today. So you should just be patient. And I said, well, sir, when I talked to Mr. Sautel, it was a very dubious conversation. I was concerned that he wasn't going to do a damn thing. Thank you for looking into this for me. I appreciate it. I called his boss, and suddenly, magically, miraculously, all of his concerns had just flittered away. And he was able to fill out the document, which said, and I'm not kidding because I read the thing, A, this person no longer works for the union. B, this person hasn't worked for the union for a particular period of time. Checkbox, checkbox, signature. That's all he had to do to send this, doc this document off instead of investigate. I hadn't worked for two months, and it was apparent that I wasn't working for the union because I hadn't worked for two months. So anyway, long story short, because I've to the story, now let's just get to the end of it. Call his boss, paperwork gets signed and sent off. So it looks like the things that are complicated aren't so complicated when you're willing to go be above and beyond to get someone's teeth kicked in. Some people think that they have power, but they forget that there are people above them that may not agree with their fucking politics. So, yay! Uh, so yeah, that was pretty much what's up with that, folks. I got a couple responses from you guys. I appreciate it. Um, basic different ideas about getting work, different ideas about dealing with the union. I appreciate all the feedback. All my new subscribers, I want to thank you very much for subscribing. I guess you guys saw the compilation video I did with Tim. And uh, I have the full version of it. So if you want to see my end of it, just my end of it, let me know and I'll post that video too. I tried to post a copy of the version of me and Tim, but the transfer didn't work and it ended up corrupting. So uh, maybe I'll be able to get that up. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm now going down 101, heading towards Santa Clara. So Paper Lilies, if you're watching this, I'm supposed to see you sometime this weekend. You didn't answer my messages. And I know you're leaving to go back to the UK, so if we're going to hang out, we need to do it by this weekend before you go. All right, folks, that's pretty much it. I'm in my car. I'm driving. I'm being dangerous. I'll see you all later.